Now over the last 1200 days, which is about 4 years, I've healed this part of my brain. And the truth is, it was a struggle, because unless I would have done anything about it, this part of my brain would have kept getting smaller every single day. So I've read the studies of over 50 different researchers, and this part of your brain is most likely also shrinking right now. I'll give you the steps which can stop that from happening to your brain in the next few minutes. Many young people in our generation have managed to do this, and it's really a small investment to save your brain. So basically, there is an area in your brain called the anterior cingulate cortex, or short ACC. This part of your brain, the ACC, is connected to all the important areas that control things like hormones, emotions, memories. So I think you're connecting the dots right now. You really want this part of your brain to be working. So how do you make sure that this part of your brain doesn't atrophy? Now there's an answer to that which we'll get to in just a minute. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I really like to create an anti-vision before we start. What would you have to do if you really wanted to destroy this part of your brain? If you wanted to make sure that it becomes as small as possible? First of all, you would make sure that you would never have to overcome resistance in your life. You would never stop yourself from accessing your cravings. You would make sure to never deal with your own emotions and thoughts and instead shift the responsibility to the outside world. You would make sure that you grow such a deep dependence on your phone that you would say in questionnaires that you can't live without it. Now if you're watching this video, you're smart and you understood that if this part of your brain gets smaller, you lose your willpower. Now this makes sense because the way we're using technology has changed our brains. We've gone from using technology as a means to organize information and help us, to now being turned into products by our own phones. The way you're using your technology is weakening your ACC. Another study of patients with a damaged ACC has shown us that they lose their entire self-efficacy, so their belief that they can achieve something. These patients end up wanting to just lay in bed all day and do nothing more than the most basic needs for survival. Now in my opinion there's a strong connection to be drawn between those patients and the habits of our generation of just laying in bed and scrolling all day. Quick side note, if you really want to understand this, read the book Stand Out of Our Light by James Williams, which really shows you the absurdity of the attention economy. Now don't get me wrong, I was also very much struggling with this, so I want to show you what helped me get through it and how you can do it too. The short answer is voluntary discomfort, but there's a lot to unpack here and a bunch of details to consider if you really want to make this as effective as possible. Now I want to start by splitting up the idea of voluntary discomfort into two areas physical discomfort and mental discomfort. And if you really want to own your mind, it's important that you practice both. Now in some of the research showing us that you can grow your ACC through voluntary discomfort, the participants did things like rowing exercises. But what I want you to understand is that it doesn't really matter what you do, as long as it's truly uncomfortable to you. What I want you to look out for is that inner voice of resistance. That inner voice that tells you all the reasons why it would be horrible to go to the gym today, why it would be horrible to leave your bed and why it would be horrible to get yourself through an entire workout. The way you grow your ACC is by actively arguing and overcoming this voice. It's by overcoming your inner resistance. But physical discomfort isn't just limited to going to the gym. It's also inhibiting yourself from doing things which you really, really want to do. For example, it can also include resisting the urges to indulge in things like junk food or pornography. Not only will resisting those things grow your ACC, but you'll be more healthy, more confident, less anxious, and the sexualizing image that was put into your head by pornography will be destroyed. Now let's go back about 2300 years ago and look at how Stoics like Marcus Aurelius were spending their days. It was one of their key practices to meditate all the negative things that could happen to them, even their death. They called it negative visualization. Not only is this a form of mental discomfort that if practiced correctly can grow your ACC, but you'll also gain gratitude and perspective for your own situation. It's the awareness of one's mortality, the idea of constantly reminding yourself that you could be dead right now or could be dead soon. Practicing a combination of both physical and mental discomfort for the past few years has been really impactful on the way that I perceive life. It's really changed how I view a good versus a bad experience or an exciting versus a boring experience. 
It's a process that takes time and I've definitely had my fair share of fuck ups along the way and absolutely not following these principles. But if I can say one thing, it is that these things actually get easier with time as they become a part of your identity and are actually able to shape your brain. What I mean is that making voluntary discomfort one of your key habits can actually cause neuroplasticity, so the changing of your brain. These changes can be in size, for example in the size of your anterior cingulate cortex, but they can also be in the number of receptors, for example your dopamine receptors. What happens when you repeatedly engage in voluntary discomfort is a decrease in the amount of dopamine receptors present in your brain. Though of course this is super simplified, this means that you need less stimulus in order to achieve the same amount of joy and pleasure in life. Which basically equals to you enjoying the work and the difficult things in life. Now in my opinion, if you really wanted to reap the largest benefits of voluntary discomfort, you should combine them with a sense of mastery. The idea of simply mastering any field of your choice. When you view voluntary discomfort through the lens of mastery, it gains an entirely new meaning. It helps you figure out why you're actually doing these things and how they will help you in your pursuit of mastery. What this means is that you will own your mind on a level you've never experienced before. The voices and sounds of content you've consumed won't be blabbering and screaming over your own ideas. But instead, you'll get to hear yourself fully and clearly for the first time. My name is Jonah, I am 18 years old and my aim is to help as many of you, so the young people of our generation, to really own their mind. I think it's the first and most important step we as a generation need to take if we're striving for a better future in which our minds won't be productized and abused.